let us study the nasal valve the nasal valve comprises of the internal nasal valve and the external nasal valve the elongated opening between the caudal end of the lateral cartilage that is the upper lateral cartilage and the medial nasal septum constitutes the internal nasal valve the caudal end of the lateral cartilage that is the upper lateral cartilage and the nasal septum this angle constitutes the internal nasal valve and it is also called ostium internum nasi now according to mink the included angle is about 20 degrees in the caucasian nose in african americans and asians the angle is clearly increased the internal nasal valve is the upper part of the nasal valve area that is completed in the caudal and lateral direction by the osseous frame of the piriform aperture and in the posterior direction by the head of the inferior turbinate the nasal valve area is located at an angle in the sagittal plane again let us see the we have the two nasal cartilages the upper lateral and the lower lateral the this is the cranial end of the upper lateral cartilage that is the caudal end the angle subtended by the caudal end of the upper lateral cartilage and the septum this angle is called the internal nasal valve now the lower lateral cartilage has got a lateral crurae and a medial crurae the upper edge of the lateral crurae of the lower lateral cartilage curls around the lower edge of the upper lateral cartilage and this is called the scrawl area in plastic surgery literature the external nasal valve the external nasal valve is limited in the lateral direction by the lower edge of the lateral crurae of the lower lateral cartilage the lower edge of the lateral crurae the lower lateral cartilage has a medial crurae and a lateral crurae the lateral crurae has got an upper edge and a lower edge the lower edge of the lateral crurae of the lower lateral cartilage with its associated fatty connective tissue and in the medial direction by the columella that constitutes the external nasal valve now this concept what do you mean by the swell body at the nasal septum the swell body of the nasal septum described for the first time by wustro is a functional importance in the area of the inner nasal valve macroscopically this is a bloated area around 5 mm thick of the cartilaginous bony septum with thickened mucosa now the swell body of the nasal septum is located above the inferior turbinate this is the inferior turbinate is above the inferior turbinate before the middle turbinate and this structure is hardly taken note of clinically although it can be visualized well in the ct the swell body of the nasal septum it is often misinterpreted as high septal deviation wexler examined samples of the nasal mucosa from this area of the lower nasal turbinate the septum and the swell body of the nasal septum in healthy subjects and compared them and he found in this region mainly glands and clearly less venous sinusoids compared to the mucosa of the lower nasal turbinates it seems that this region has a regulatory effect on the air flow and secretory functions what has the swell body of the nasal septum this the swell body of the nasal septum now the intercartilaginous region of the nose that is the upper lateral cartilage the lower edge meets the upper edge of the lateral crurae of the lower lateral cartilage and this curls around each other that is called the scrawl area the intercartilaginous region between the ala cartilage 
and their lateral cartilage can be seen as a diathrosis with two degrees of freedom mainly translation and rotation i repeat again this is the upper lateral cartilage it is got a cranial and a caudal edge or a lower edge this is the lower lateral cartilage with a medial crurae and a lateral crurae the upper edge of the lateral crurae of the lower lateral cartilage and the lower edge of the upper lateral cartilage curl around each other that is the intercartilaginous area and this is called the scroll area the internal nasal valve is the crane caudal end of the lower lateral cartilage with the nasal septum the external nasal valve is with the lateral crurae of the lower lateral cartilage with the medial crurae that forms the columella we have therefore the internal nasal valve and the external nasal valve the posterior edge of the lateral cartilage is firmly connected to the nasal bone the cartilage partially lies under the bone and the pericondrium passes continuously into the periosteum the lateral cartilage is continuously pass into the cartilage in a septum and form a firm connection and they can be separated in the caudal portion only the intercartilage in this region is anatomically constant the cephalic edge of the ala cartilage normally projects over the caudal edge of the lateral cartilage without touching them and in addition in most cases cartilaginous sesamoids of varying number and size are found in the intercartilaginous region and the nasal cartilages are surrounded by pericondrium and are connected to each other through band like five firm cords of connective tissue and i repeat again in between these two cartilages cartilaginous sesamoids of varying number and size are found physiology the internal nasal valve constitutes the bottleneck what is the internal nasal valve between the lower edge of the upper lateral cartilage and the nasal septum that angle what is the angle about 20 degrees and it is responsible for almost half of total airway resistance a significant rise in pressure is recorded in particular within the first 2 cm of air passage and that is called the flow limiting segment through the nose now in this context it have we have to elaborate on some underlying physical laws what are these laws the equations stated assume standardized parameters such as rigid pipes and ideal liquids or gases but they are thoroughly useful for illustrating and are transmissible to the conditions of the nose in general ohm's law for flow says that the quantity of air or fluids flowing through a rigid vessel is directly proportional to the pressure difference and inversely pr- proportional to the flow resistance now applied to nasal breathing ohm's law means that in case of increased flow resistance due to a pathologic septal deviation turbinate hypertrophy or nasal valve stenosis the flow quantity decreases and an impairment of nasal breathing results furthermore an increased pressure difference between the aperture of the nose and the nasal pharynx for example in case of forced breathing causes an increased flow quantity now it also means that in case of a present pathologically increased nasal resistance increases pressure differences are required in order to reach a sufficient nasal breathing as a result and this condition may again cause disorder of the nasal valve on which we will elaborate later another equation important for physiology of the nose is the bernoulli equation and in simple terms it states that the sum of dynamic pressure and static pressure is constant to explain this we can say that liquids or gases are accelerated on the way from a place of high static pressure that is a nasal aperture to a place of low static pressure meaning the nasal valve area and there have a f- higher flow rate the cross sectional area in the nasal valve area amounts to about 60 mm squared compared to 300 mm squared in the downstream sections of the nose and thus we can derive from the bernoulli equation that the highest flow rates in the nose are found in the valve area now the lowest rate is found in the area of the olfactory region disorders of nasal valve and pathophysiological particularly particularities in general we have to distinguish between static and dynamic disorders of the nasal valve both disorders can occur at the same time 
or be interdependent an impairment of nasal breathing occurs when the nasal valve varies constricted through pathologies of any kind now in this context causes of static disorders are hypertrophy of the head of lower turbinate nasal septal deviations bony constructions of the piriform aperture anatomic variations of the cartilage in the lateral nasal valve and or scarred stenosis of the nasal valves and furthermore neurogenic causes facial nerve paralysis stroke can result in a symptomatic impairment of nasal breathing through distortion of the lateral nasal valve although the functioning of the perinasal musculature is still not clear in its entirety obstructive symptoms based on nasal wing collapse with denervation of the mimic musculature are described and this can be provoked experimentally through a neural blockage of the facial nerve in case of a pre existing narrow nasal valve obstructive symptoms occur even after minor restrictions of the cross sectional area of the nasal valve plane according to poisel's law so what are the laws poisel's law bernoulli's phenomenon and the ohms law pathologies of the nasal valve can also be divided into primary and secondary disorders primary disorders are narrowness of excessively weak lateral walls with resulting collapse phenomenon that are congenital or are acquired in the course of life without surgical or traumatic changes a typical example is the tension nose that often has an elongated vertical nasal aperture namely an external nasal valve and a narrow internal nasal valve tending to collapse phenomenon deformities of the nasal valve area are present in case of cleft malformations as well in this case ala cartilaginous of asymmetric configuration or additional scar changes after repeated surgeries cause stenosis of the valve area and in case of broad or saddle nosis a drop of the tip of the nose with widening of the external and internal nasal valve namely the ballooning phenomenon occurs and this results in a change of flow conditions turbulences with consecutive impairment of nasal breathing age related changes of the nasal valve area that cause a change of the static conditions constitute a problem that is often underrated with increasing age structural alterations processes occur in the cartilage involving a loss of elastic properties furthermore a loss of tone of the nasal musculature can be observed and this results in the drooping nose tip that can often be seen in elderly people and a weakening of the lateral cartilaginous nasal valve and this results in an impairment of nasal breathing through a collapse phenomenon or even in case of non forced breathing for making sure that a disorder of the nasal valve is present the performance of the cartilage maneuver is recommended and it was first described by heinberg in 73 and for doing so the nasal valve area is widened by pulling it in lateral direction in the area of the nasolabial groove an improvement of nasal breathing indicates an involvement of the valve and the findings made thanks to this maneuver however have to be assessed critically since nasal breathing is improved in patients having a physiologically confi- configured nasal valve area as well and not all stenosis can be widened by lateral tension an overview of the nasal valve